Hello everyone, today I'll be showing you how to build a fully automatic mushroom farm and it's a cell style farm meaning you can stack one on top of another next to each other and you can just put them all in a very compact space until you have as many as you want. So to start with you'll need soul sand uh, whatever kind of mushroom you plan on growing, I'm going to do both for this video but maybe you're doing brewing then you'd only want the uh, portobello or brown mushroom You'll need a hopper, a bucket of water, and pistons. You'll need actually two pistons if you're doing this in survival, and two buckets of water. So we'll be growing our mushrooms on soul sand for this, and that means we need to encase this in darkness, because it's not podzol or uh, mycelium, so it needs to be dark. So I'll fast forward through that part of the video here. And you can make it as small as you want, or as long as approximately the length of how far water flows. So you see this part of this is dark enough, because you can plant this mushroom here. And this part over here is still not dark enough, so we'll need to continue making all these walls. So even though I did it a little longer for this video, just to show you you can do that that way if you want to, I suggest making this about six blocks long. That's about the length that the water will flow when there's two of them right next to each other. So here we are in the darkness. Good for mushrooms, but not good for a video tutorial. So I'll use a potion of night vision so we can see what we're doing. But you see it's dark enough to grow these mushrooms in here. And you can even see how the mushrooms are a little uh, bioluminescent. These mushrooms don't put that effect and these mushrooms do. Anyway, to get on to the actual tutorial of the video, we'll first make a chest to drain into. And obviously you don't need to use a chest, you can make a line of hoppers to carry these somewhere else or wherever you want to store your mushrooms, but just for this video I'll be putting them into a chest right outside the building. So we'll go back inside, seal that up except for one little hole connecting to the chest and now we're going to put our hoppers on the lowest level of our farm. So whatever the lowest level of your farm is, it should have a row of two hoppers right next to each other. And the reason we're using soul sand is because hoppers can suck any items right through soul sand. So when you grow it on soul sand, you can just wash away the mushrooms with water, and then they get sucked right up. You don't have to worry about using minecart uh, hoppers like a lot of other designs use. Which, you know, there's nothing wrong with those, but they can it just takes up more space, because you got to put the track down and then put the cart on top of it. So anyway, after you put down your ones on top of the hoppers, put down two on each side at an elevated level and fill that with mushrooms. These are going to be your mushrooms that grow down to the lower level. These mushrooms on the upper level will not get washed away by the water. So this is what makes the whole farm basically. So next we'll need to put the pistons which will open twice per day using my once per day signal. So it does it once during the day and then once uh, either late at night or early in the morning. So let me think about how I want to set these pistons up, because you know, we'll put them on the side so the uh, water doesn't wash away the redstone torches. So just put your torches behind, on a block behind the pistons, like this, so they both get powered. And now we'll make our water chamber. And we want this to be dark so it doesn't let any light into the mushroom room. So fill that with water and then seal it off to the sunlight. And now when those pistons retract, this whole room will fill with water. And then any mushrooms that are on that bottom level of soul sand will get washed away, sucked up into the hoppers, and then put into your chest. Oops, I just flooded the outdoors. So you see if that piston is retracted like this, it floods this area with water. And that would... So you see that goes about halfway, that's about six blocks roughly. So, obviously this one's too long and we need to make another one at the other end. So you see, the water will wash away the mushrooms, and then it gets sucked right up through the soul sand. So we're back here near the pistons again, and we're going to be building the once per day signal switch, which I'll link in an annotation on screen. Um, basically what this does, it's very easy to build, you can build it just like how it looks on screen. It lets through a signal it, once or twice per day, depending on how you define the day. Basically, the signal is only able to go through the comparator for part of the daytime, and then again early in the morning. So it's either once or twice per day, and so you just build it just like this. So it, when it's one signal strength worth of power, you need to kind of understand how daylight sensors work. 
but when it's one signal strength worth of power, it's able to pass through the comparator, and then once it gets later in the day and gets to two signal strengths worth of power, it is no longer able to pass through because it gets cut off by that repeater. So anyway, build it just like this so when it is able to pass through, like this, it unpowers your pistons and floods this room with water. And again, like I said, this is only about halfway. We would need to build one of these on the other side. I won't do that for this tutorial just to keep it short, but if you wanted to build one on the other side, it would look exactly identical to the one we already built. Also, if you prefer, if you're doing this in a cell design, you can hook all this redstone up to a single once per day switch. But that's up to you, I'm just building a single one for this tutorial. So let's test this room out, let's fill this whole thing with mushrooms. Of course mushrooms are a pretty slow growing crop, so if you're actually doing this on a survival map, you're not going to get a huge amount of mushrooms each day just from one of these farms. But if you leave it running, it constantly harvests, you know, twice every day. So if you leave it running and you stay in the area, you'll start racking up plenty of mushrooms. So there we go, there's one harvest. Like I said, it harvests, you know, about six, five or six. Let's see why they didn't all get harvested. Okay, so some got stuck on the side here. Um, if you want to really fix that, personally, I wouldn't do it just because it would probably add more lag. But if you wanted to, you could go to any of these. Let's cut off the water first. You could go here and just connect another line of hoppers and get some soul sand. Here. So basically if you wanted to connect another line of hoppers running underneath the mushrooms that don't get washed away, just in case any mushrooms bounce up there, you could do that. I probably wouldn't do it, it just adds unnecessary lag. Like I said, it's going to always be harvesting because it's fully automatic, so you don't have to do anything to this once you build it except collect the mushrooms. So that's the whole automated mushroom farm. Please like the video if you enjoyed and subscribe for new tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Thank you for watching.